The Blink Blade. It's a fantasy archetype that specializes in short-range teleports to always be where the enemy least wants them to be. Combined with burst single target damage, this archetype plays very similar to a rogue. You get in there, you get your kill, and you get out. Instead of relying on stealth though, they rely on pure speed. It's an incredibly fun and dynamic playstyle, and it was a playstyle that 5e simply didn't do justice. So now that 5.5 is out, and yes, we're calling it 5.5, it's the first build that I wanted to do. So here comes the Blink Blade. For this build, we'll be using the 2024 handbook only. I want people who only have that handbook, new players, to be able to build this build. Here we have our character. This is going to turn into our Blink Blade right now. It has no build options included, so, What's the most important thing we're going to add to pull off being a Blink Blade? It is Warlock Pact of the Fae. When we choose Pact of the Fae, we get a number of Misty Steps, which is a bonus action teleport 30 feet spell. We get a number equal to our Charisma modifier, so it's going to be very important for this build to rush building up our Charisma. The more Charisma, the more teleports. But even with a number of free teleports equal to our Charisma modifier, we're going to want more teleports, which is why we're going the Cloud Goliath Lineage. This gives us a number of teleports equal to our proficiency bonus. So now we can come right out the gate with teleports and only build from there. As for our background, we're going to be a merchant. We're going to get a plus two in Charisma, plus one in Constitution, and pick up the Lucky Feet from there. As for our stats, our primary stat is Charisma. We want to get it as high as possible and bonus points if we can get it to an odd stat. That way we can take a feat to round it out. We're also going to need our strength to at least 15. This is going to allow us to put on heavy armor and it allows us to use heavy weapons, not at disadvantage by having over 13 strength. Constitution and Wisdom are equally important. Constitution may be slightly more, so we'll pick that one up next but we want to put all the other points we can into Wisdom to help round out our saves. As for Intelligence and Dexterity, well, we're pretty terrible at them. There are dump stats. We're going to take our first level in Fighter. This one level dip does a lot for us. First off, it's going to give us proficiency in Constitution saving throws, making our concentration that much better. It's going to give us Second Wind, giving us a bit more health. It's going to give us Weapon Mastery, which makes any weapon we decide to use much better. And it's going to give us a Fighting Style, which we're going to pick up the Great Weapon Fighting Style. But now there's a new rule in 5.5. In order to use one of these heavy weapons effectively, you need to have 13 in Strength or better, because this really forces us to go the Strength route, which means we need to get Heavy Armor, which means we need at least a 15 in Strength. So let's go ahead and equip that Heavy Armor. Now that we have our heavy armor on, we need to choose our weapon. There's three that really stood out to me, and each offers a different kind of playstyle. First off, we have the pike. The pike allows us to use our weapon mastery to push people around. This is really good in conjunction with teleporting, because we can always teleport next to the enemy who's close enough to a hazard on the battlefield that we can push them straight into it. It gives us a lot of battlefield control and definitely would be a fun build. Another idea is the maul with topple. Topple is going to give us a chance to knock people prone. Now, we are specifically going to be targeting ranged units, so when we knock them down to the ground, it's going to give us advantage on the rest of our attacks, but it's also going to make it harder for them to run away from us. But personally, I have to go with the Great Sword. It gives us Graze. What Graze means is even when we miss, we still do our modifier and damage. Well, we already want to increase our Charisma mod as much as possible because we want to get as many teleports as possible. So this synergizes with that. We're boosting both at the exact same time. Level two, we're going into Warlock, baby. We're gonna pick it up Pack to the Blade. Now, if we were just a fighter teleporting around, we'd be able to use any of those three weapons, but because we're taking Pack to the Blade, we have to choose the one we commit to. This is where I'll commit to Greatsword. As far as spells, our spells are really gonna be focused on increasing our damage. So I think Hex, is a great beginning example of what kind of spells we're going to be looking at. Eldritch Blast gives us a fantastic range option, which is an important piece of the Blink Blade playstyle. And also I'm going to pick up Mind Sliver. I think Mind Sliver is a great synergizing spell, damage spell, with Eldritch Blast. It attacks saves instead of armor, and it also sets you up, or your teammates up, to do any kind of spell casting that's going to attack their saves. Very good cantrip. Level 3, we're going into Warlock 2. I'm going to be picking up Agonizing Blast first. 
I mentioned that it's really important for this build to have a play style that includes ranged options. Why? Well, what does mobility mean? It means we get to choose our fights where we want them, when we want them. So if we're going up against an archer, we get to teleport right next to them and smack the absolute crap out of them. We don't want to teleport away from them. We want to use our teleports to get right by them. But if we're facing a giant freaking barbarian, then we want to stay away from them. We want to get the hell out of dodge. So when they smack us, we want to teleport away and start blasting them with Eldritch Blast and doing a kiting playstyle. As for our second invocation, I'm going to be taking Devil's Sight. Devil's Sight is going to allow us to see in the dark, which is basically essential in this game. And as a lineage where we can't see in the dark, it's a big deal. Level 4, Warlock 3, we get to pick up Pact of the Archfey. This is a fantastic subclass now. Used to be pretty weak, they did a number on this subclass to make it incredible. First off, we're getting Steps of the Fey. This is our teleporting feature. We now get Charisma number of free Misty Step casts per day. Not only that, they do additional things. We have two additional things at this level. The first is Refreshing Steps. This is going to give us temporary HP on teleport. That's pretty nice, makes us tankier. Or we get Taunting Step. When we teleport away from someone, they have to make a save against our spell save DC. If they fail, they have disadvantage on attacking anybody but us, but chances are we're not going to be near them. Taunting Step is the better of the two if you ask me, but really I think they're both perfectly valid and can be used whenever you really feel like it. Pact of the Archfey also brings us some incredible spell casting. Level 5, Warlock 4, we're taking Inspiring Leader. This is going to increase our Charisma mod, which is, you know, we really love that. That's a huge deal for us. But on top of that, it's going to help us be a team player without having to be a team player. Level 6, Warlock 5, we're picking up Thirsting Blade. Thirsting Blade gives us that extra attack, which is massive, especially when we have Weapon Mastery and we want to be proccing our Weapon Mastery over and over again. I'm also picking up Repelling Blast. I mentioned with the Pike that having some battlefield control is incredible on a Blink Blade. No different with Repelling Blast. Level 7, Warlock 6, we're going to get Misty Escape. This gives us Reaction Misty Steps whenever we get hit with an attack. It also gives us two new Fey abilities, the first being Invisibility. So not only do we teleport away, now we also go invisible on teleport, so we just vanish. That's awesome. Or we have Dreadful Step, which is whether we teleport in or out, we can do some extra damage. Now. Level 8, Warlock 7, we get a massive spell this level. Greater Invisibility is a game-changing spell. It gives us advantage on every single attack, and basically no one can target us with spells, and they have disadvantage on attacking us. It's a massive buff to our offense and our defense at the same time. Fantastic. Level 9, Warlock 8, we're going to get our Charisma buff, going to 20 Charisma if we started out with 17, which hopefully we did. Level 10, Warlock 9, we're going to be picking up Life Drinker. This is an invocation that lets us do a bit of extra damage and sometimes heal ourselves. Level 11, Warlock 10, we get Beguiling Defense. See, the thing about going Pact of the Fey Warlock is all of our defense is really covered. We really didn't have to invest a lot in our defense, so every decision had a lot more to do with trying to get more offense going. Let's talk about level 12 and beyond. So as far as feats are concerned, I, I really am not that concerned about picking up more ability modifiers. Charisma was the only one we really had to focus on. Sure, some would do some nice things for us, but I think feats are going to be better. Mage Slayer both helps our saves and it allows us to extremely consistently knock people out of concentration. We are guaranteed to do damage with every single attack, and they now have to roll at disadvantage. And if any of those are below their concentration check, they lose concentration. That's really, really powerful. Another note I want to make is Bewitching Magic plus Misty Visions. We can now do infinite Misty Steps. So think about this, we're creating an illusion, we're teleporting, and then we get the bonus Misty Step abilities like, say, go invisible or do some damage. Just think about that. We teleport, go invisible, and create an, an illusion all at once. Could be us, where we just were. Depending on how that DM rules that, how the crap are they supposed to know that's an illusion? You were literally just there. As for our epic boon, dimensional travel for infinite teleports is amazing because it doesn't stack with our teleport, so we can just attack, teleport, bonus action, teleport. Just gives us more teleporting. This is just one of many ways to do the blink blade. You could focus more on damage output. You could focus more on being a Blink Blaster. You could focus more on control. I think about the play style that I'm going to be playing as a Blink Blade. 
the key word is flexibility. We've got a lot of 5.5 builds in the pipeline. It's been really fun having the new book come out and feeling really inspired with all, all these builds again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the subscribe button because a lot more are coming and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.